Welcome now to your analysis of the F8 past papers. My name, as I say, I said in previous videos, is Martin Jones, and I'm going to take you through the F8 past papers. Um, the way that I'm going to talk very briefly about the uh, past papers, uh, recent past papers, is by um, roughly analysing um, recent past papers between the various areas within the syllabus. Um, I've got the syllabus up there in front of you now, and um, I'll just very quickly remind you of the syllabus areas. Uh, you've got the uh, audit framework, which is your ethics and um, the way that you have to behave uh, broadly uh, when you're doing an audit. Uh, you've got internal audit, which is quite a small area. Uh, it's all about your relationship as an external auditor. Planning is a massive thing. It's just what it sounds like. It's the process of analysing the risks within an entity and planning to make sure you address those risks. Uh, internal control, that, that too is what it sounds like. It's internal control plus a bit more. It's not just internal control. It's internal control plus what we do to the internal controls, known as control testing. So that's that. That's internal control is controls and testing those controls. Um, as mentioned in previous recordings, um, audit evidence is the biggie. That's the massive one that contains uh, substantive testing, which is the core of audit. That's the process of um, auditing financial statements to verify that they show a true and fair view. That really is the core, the spine of uh, audit and assurance. And then you've got F and G, which, as I've mentioned previously, are quite closely related. Uh, you review financial statements in order to give an opinion. And the review is the process of looking at the FS and the giving the opinion is the process of reporting. So those two are very closely related. Um, I've as assessed um, the past papers, recent past papers, and come up with approximate percentages um, of um, relative importance of the exam, uh, sorry, of the syllabus areas uh, within past exams. Uh, these percentages are a, a little bit uh, wobbly, shall we say, because, for example, if you have a question that's asking you to, um, as part of your planning, analyse the quality of the internal controls, is that doing planning or is it doing internal controls? Do you see what I mean? Or if you are auditing the internal controls by using the internal auditors... Are you doing internal audits? Are you doing internal controls? I, as you can imagine, when it comes down to real exam questions, they're, they're very, very realistic. And, um, you know, audit is, is, is a big subject. It's, it's a big blob, if I'm honest. Audit in real life is a big blob. And it sort of starts at the beginning and ends at the end and sort of mushes along in between. So there aren't really any black and white lines between these various syllabus areas. There aren't really any black and white lines between these syllabus areas. They're all sort of one thing, which is audit. But nevertheless, it is possible to allocate question requirements between these various headings, and that's what I've done in order to give an approximate percentage of weighting that has been used by the examiners uh, used by, yeah, used by the examiners over the last few years. And these are the figures that I've come up with. For audit framework, that includes the key issue of ethics. It's in almost every exam, and frequently it's 20 marks. So it's come out at 15% of the last few exams, because sometimes it's not examined, you see, very occasionally. So it's come out at 15%. Internal audit is a bit of an on-off switch. Um, it, it is examined for 20 marks. It's sometimes examined for 8 marks. And it's sometimes examined not at all. So that came in at 8%. Um, planning. Uh, it's in almost every exam. Well, it's pretty much in every exam, to be honest with you. But sometimes it's just 5 marks. Sometimes it's 20. Sometimes it's even more than 20. It's a whole question like question three, but it also comes up in question one as well. So it could even be like 28 marks. Yeah, it could be quite, you know, quite frequently. It could be 28 marks. It could be eight marks. And it, the weighting for that, that, when I analysed it, it came out at 16% was the weighting for that. Internal control. Um, internal control, again, it's almost always examined. Um, it came out at 12%. 
uh, and a very nice 12% as well. Um, there are some, it's quite often comes up as 10 marks, to be quite honest with you, but it sometimes comes up as more. And the classic question on internal control is, what's the weaknesses with internal controls and what's the recommendations for improvement? Five marks and five marks. And when that comes up, it's absolutely lovely. And it is quite a common question. That one came up as 12%. Not surprisingly, the big figure, 35%, is against audit evidence. Substantive testing is in every exam, usually in more than one question. Normally, the core of the core question, which is question one, is audit evidence and substantive testing. But usually, question four has got a fair amount of substantive testing as well. So that came out as 35%. Um, review and reporting... Uh, came out as around about 14%. So I suggested it was 7%. I suggest that it is 7% and 7% approximately. There's not too much difference between reviewing and reporting because you have to review in order to report. So those two came out as 14% combined and therefore I suggest 7 and 7. So that's approximately how the syllabus comes up and has come up in the past examination questions that we've seen. These are the trends. So just to remind you again so that you've got a flavour for this, audit framework, that came out as 15%. Internal audit came out as 8%. Planning and risk came out as 16%. Internal control, that came out as 12%. The big one, audit evidence, 35%. And then review and reporting, 7 and 7% 7 each. Okay, so that's an analysis of recent past papers based upon the syllabus.